Hey everyone, welcome back to Max Thrust Gaming in episode 2 of our vanilla Kerbal tutorial, whatever you want to call it, playthrough. So where we left off before was that we had reached uh, space, uh, but we weren't able to get into orbit. So let's go ahead and go into our contracts and see uh -huh. what kind of good stuff they have for us today. So right now we have these two contracts available. Um, those we can do at the same time, uh, and it's going to be a pretty good payout, but we're going to have to build a pretty good sized rocket for it. Uh, let's definitely go ahead and get orbit. And as of right now, I don't see, oh, we could do that one. I don't see any, anything else right now that I want to take. So let's go ahead and try to knock out that escape uh escape trajectory for um those two contracts that we already had the hall uh, LVT45 and the test LV909 terrier <clears throat> Excuse me my my throat is a little itchy Anyways not that you guys care about that uh let's go ahead and find the 45 the swivel engine and then what we're gonna have to do is build a second stage that's gonna keep us going and leave uh, the sphere of influence of Kerbin and it's an engine that we have to test anyway so it'll work out for us let's put a antenna on here so we have control so everything there looks good let's go ahead and bring this down a little bit because it looks kind of wonky just sitting up there there we go all right how much does this weigh that's four and a half tons right there is there anything else we could possibly want to put on this i think not oops let's go ahead and put the root part back as that all right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have to design a first stage that's gonna propel this high enough that the second engine, this 909, will take over and get us to escape velocity. So I think I'm gonna go with a liquid fueled engine and we're gonna have to see if we can put enough of these on here without going over our part limit. So we have 11 parts left. We could do a Reliant. That's got more thrust to it. Let's take a look at what that puts us at for thrust to weight right now. I have to rearrange these a little bit. Let's go ahead and add another. All right, so that puts us at, that's not bad, 2000 Delta V. And we're at 1.41 um, thrust to weight ratio. So what's that going to be if we go to vacuum? This part right, this engine right here, this stage has almost 2,000 delta V. And this one, we're looking at a total of 43.55. That's not going to be enough to get us to where we want to go. What's our part count looking like? We're at 20. So we have 10 parts left. So I think what we're gonna do is go ahead and put some big old side boosters on here. Something like so. And then we'll just get these about level, that looks good some aerodynamics on there what's that got us to we have four parts left so let's go ahead and add uh, these to keep us stable one of the other reasons why I'm doing this is this thruster or this uh, engine right here is a reliant it has no um, gimbal what that means is the engine can move around and help control us if you look here this has three three degrees of gimbal on the swivel 
Uh, but on the Reliant, we have no swivel. So that means, or uh, excuse me, no gimbal controls. So that means that this engine just fires straight down. These boosters just fire straight down. So we have no control other than these winglets right here, these with flaps on them. All right. So now that we've got that done, I'm not the, let's just call this the, the Max Thrust 4. Max thrust four. I'm hoping to get some ideas for naming conventions from you guys so we can start giving these some good names. Maybe we can do uh, com community law, uh, names, YouTube account names. Um, send me your stuff. We'll figure it out. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is we'll make sure all this is in order. Excuse me. So this should go these two engines, release the boosters, stage separation, engine turn on, and test. But we don't even have to test this, it just says to haul it. So let's see, we're at 51 now in vacuum. That should be enough to get us to where we want to go. So the next thing we need to do here is we need to change our thrust to weight because it's too high. You're going to use a lot of energy trying to push through the thick atmosphere. It, it, it's just a waste of uh, delta V if you try to do that. So we want to bring this down. And I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to bring this down as well. And then we can turn this back up once we're going. All right. Everything looks good. We're right at 30 parts. And I think this is a winner right here. One thing we do have to be careful of is this has no SAS like we've talked about before. So I am going to have to really be careful on how we uh, go up and make sure we don't get out of our uh, orientation too far. All right, sounds good. Let's save it, and I'll see you on the launch pad. All right, on the launch pad, let's do one more last check. Everything looks good here. I say we're a go for launch in five, four, three, two, one, launch. We're on the way. Let's get this down here so that we can uh, see how we're starting to move around. We need to correct that. And we got to be really careful because if uh, if we start losing control, it's very hard without SAS to to gain back stability. All right, this is easy, does it? It wants to go that way. I'm just gonna kind of let it do its thing, mostly until we get uh, or while we're in this heavy atmosphere. What I will do, we can move around a lot more after about 10,000 meters. So I'm going to keep kind of edging it to not drop too far down because we really want to go up because uh, we are just trying to escape. And so right now what I'm doing is I'm not watching the rocket at all. I'm watching my nav ball because my keys are always the same direction when you watch the nav ball. Okay, we staged. Let's go ahead and turn that up to full switch over so we can see our altitude everything so far is going all right we we did stray off course a little bit but that's not going to kill us we're up 26 we're really getting to the point now where it's not going to hurt us anymore uh, with flipping over or anything like that so i think we're on track right now everything's looking good try to steer this. I switched over to orbital um, just so I can get a better idea of if we're laying it down too far. But everything so far looks good. Now that we're getting up here, I'm going to start creeping it over. There we go. Now the reason why we're able to control this still, even though there's really no oxygen for us to have wind resistance to cause control. Let's just go ahead and stage real quick. Fire. 
fire. Or, I, I'm sorry, I kept saying escape velocity. I didn't mean escape velocity. I mean, we have to do an orbit. Oh, whoa, I'm not paying attention. I was not paying attention. Yeah, sorry I kept saying escape velocity. That's not what I meant. I meant we were having to do a really big orbit. Alright, let's start laying this bad boy over. Man, this is a real pain to control. Alright. We've reached the max of our orbit here. And so what we want to do now is just cruise up to the top. Right up here. You know, watch our electric charge. We're good on electric charge. So we're going to go ahead and start making our way to the top by time warping. And what I'm going to do real quick before I get up there, what we're going to do is, I'm, I'm, when I get up here, I'm going to burn. But what I'm going to do is burn out to meet this contract right here. So we're going to make our periapsis about 340, maybe 350. No, not 350, uh, 320 to 330. And that way, we will go through this point right here, no matter what. And we can test that engine. Okay, let's how much fuel, uh, we got tons of liquid fuel left, so we should be good. We're about half a tank now. Let's go ahead and speed it back up again. And let's not get it too fast. All right. And let's go ahead and start making our burn. Obviously, this isn't the most fuel efficient way to do things, but. Just learn a little rotation on there because it kind of helps stabilize your ship just a little bit. Alright. Alright, that's good enough. So we are in orbit now. And as you can see, we need to be at 570 to 580. We're just a hair over, but we just hit our Apple apps right now. As you can see, we're going to start dropping down. So as soon as we drop down into the limits here, uh, we will gain this contract. The next thing we have to do is be ready to test the Terrier engine with this test button right here in between this altitude. Let's go ahead and speed things up a little bit so we're not just sitting and staring at this beautiful background. And boom. So we just completed that mission. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to speed it up and make our way down to the 330, 340. So I want to stop a little bit before 340. You want to give yourself a little time to be ready. Now remember, we don't have any solar panels or any way of creating electricity, so we only have those batteries keeping us alive right now. All right, so let's go ahead and watch this. As soon as we get that green check mark, I'm going to tap this uh, run test button, and that will complete that contract as well. And we're coming up to it. And we're good. All right, there we go. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is we have enough fuel. I'm just going to start burning right here. And we're going to bring our periapsis down to where we no longer are in orbit. Because I do not want to leave space debris. So see, we've brought it down now. This will crash into Kerbin. And we're good. So we have accomplished that mission.
and we can move on to the next contracts. All right, guys, so uh, one big tip, like I said before, we knocked out two contracts with one launch. That means that the, the profit that we made off of that single rocket was much greater than what it would have been if we launched two rockets to do one contract each. So every time you can find a grouping of contracts that you can put together and you think that you can um, complete all of them, make sure you do it. Uh, not only that, but it just makes it a little more fun because it makes it a little more complex. Let's see what kind of new things that we got up here. We have orbiting. That's a great payout. So let's go ahead and just take that one because of how good the payout is. The one thing we didn't even look at is the fact that we achieved orbit. So we actually had three contracts pay out on that one. I just realized that. Um, we're not going to be return to Kerbin from orbit. Oh, well, that's a good one. That's an easy one to do. Return to Kerbin from orbit. Let's take that. We should, too bad we didn't have that one before. Uh, what is this? Have Rocket Max model S2 Kerbin just flying. That's another one we should take. Uh -huh. And I don't think we're going to touch any of these other ones. All right, so one thing we're going to do now is we've upgraded the launch pad. We have upgraded the mission control center. The next big one I highly recommend you upgrading is the tracking station. It's only going to cost you 150 on normal. Gets a lot tougher in the hard mode. But what this is going to do is it's going to make it able to see patch conics, which means we can start planning maneuvers. The other thing you can do is we get a greater range on the antenna from the tracking station. So let's go ahead and upgrade that. And I'm just going to see where we need 225. Actually, I'm going to upgrade this too, because another big thing is getting a max part count of 255 instead of 30. So let's go ahead and upgrade that right now as well. All right, perfect. That gives us a $100,000 budget to work with. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I don't have any issues with that, so uh, I think we should be good there. All right, so now let's develop our next mission plan. We need to return from uh, orbit to Kerbin. Done. We can knock that one out. Haul this. We can knock that one out. Do this. We can do that one. And this one, we could definitely do this one here as well. We can knock out all of these missions in one launch. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're gonna do a crewed trip this time. And we are going to put a heat shield on. And remember guys, these heat shields, you do not need that much ablator when you're just doing small orbits around Kerbin. Even coming back from the moon, you don't need over 100. So I'm going to put us at 40. I'm going to put a decoupler on. Now, with these, you can do that if you like that look. You can do that if you like that look. You know, it's, it's just personal preference. I honestly don't really care. So now what we have to look at is we have to make an orbit at 450 to 460. And the problem is, is we're not using that uh, 909 anymore. We have to use these big heavy engines, which can cause a little issue with your weight. So right now we are at 2000 Delta V. In a vacuum, we're at 23. That should be enough in just this alone to get us into our uh, circularization orbit. But we have to build something big enough to get us up there because now we're pushing 7.42 tons up. Now the great thing though is our part count is much bigger. And so we don't have to worry so much about what we're building. 
I'm going to go ahead and go with a swivel engine on the bottom for control. And then we're going to put, how big do it, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think we'll go six high. So I'm going to put it just above the middle here and I'll show you what I'm doing. Actually, let's put this right on. And then we're going to attach these tanks. And now we're going to put them on like so. And we're going to do one more up top. What I'm doing here is when I eject these tanks when they run out of fuel, I want them to push from the top basically keeping this as your pivot point and have them come out this way. You've put them down in the middle or down towards the bottom, you're going to have them try to come back and collide with your ship. So you always want to have them a little off center and to the top. Now the next thing we're going to put on is the Reliant. That's going to provide us with plenty of thrust. And let's work this out a little bit. Those are all good there, so we're all set now. Now one thing, I do want to bring uh, these, I'm probably going to bring this down a little bit. Maybe to 70, and then we'll drop these down just a little bit. So I'm looking at that number right there, 1.48, I'm okay with that. Now, I am a little concerned with having such a big top here with these sticking off. So what I am going to do is just put some small fins at the bottom just to help try to stabilize our rocket a little bit. We might not really need them, but hey, we don't have a part count anymore. We're only at 15,000. 400 for uh, the cost and we're gonna make a butt ton of money on this so let's go ahead and slap this on right here because that's one of our contracts is to test the TT 38k radial decoupler and the other thing we're gonna need is one of these rover wheels and we're just gonna slap it down here at the base because we will still be on this center stage through both of those missions. All right, so it looks like everything is where we need it to be here. So let's take a look. Let's just double check everything real quick. So we're gonna have to test this. We're gonna probably test it somewhere at that point. And we can move it back and forth. I can show you that when we're actually doing the launch. Um, we are going to test this and we can attest, we can test that immediately so that's not going to be an issue. And then we're going to switch over to these and we have to actually perform the test so we're going to have to click on that little test button again so that should be fine and then all we got to do is just come back safely. That's the key. Max thrust was it six now? Did we do five last time? Four. Five this time. Max thrust five. Go ahead and save. Why don't we send, we'll send uh, Jeb. All right, you know what? Let's go with Valentina. All right, Val, do us good. All right, well, I'll see you at the launch pad. All right, welcome back to the launch pad. We are all set. We have daytime and SAS is on, throttles are up. Check our staging one last time. And let's go ahead and bring up our contract menu so we can make sure we're hitting our spots. Let's, uh, another thing we need to do is go ahead and actually we don't need that one, but let's go ahead and get this up so we can Oh, uh, maybe we don't. We just have to haul it. So this will automatically go. You'll see it when we take off. It'll automatically go. 
So the only one we're looking at is this one. We gotta make sure when we hit 19,000 to 22,000 meters up here that we go ahead and decouple it. All right, in five, four, three, two, one, launch. And we're off. Everything is looking good. As you can see, we've completed that mission just for having it on there. Let's go ahead and get a nice little screenshot here. All right, let's start our roll. Everything is looking good so far. The reason why I'm burning so far straight up and down and not um, doing this sooner is just the fact that we have to go all the way to 450. So we don't need to rush and, and try to get into orbit. We can uh, use some of this vertical velocity first. And once we get up into the thinner atmosphere, we'll start to really turn it over. Everything is looking really good. Getting ready to boost your separation. And I totally missed that. I was so focused on this, I wasn't even paying attention. Where were you? Why didn't you guys let me know? It's all right. So we're not going to get that one done uh, in this mission. So we can just go, actually, let's just go ahead and get rid of it now because there's nothing we can do with it anymore. So, well, that sucks, but that's okay. We're still getting a great payout for the rest of these. All right, I'm going to start using this booster to get us our horizontal velocity now. And we're looking really good on this. Looking really good. That's a well-designed uh, rocket, if I do say so myself. <laughs> well, let me finish that up with if we actually make it to orbit and everything works out right. But, it's, you know, so far it's been pretty good. Alright, so we're coming up to the end of this stage and we're off so now we just gotta hope that we have enough fuel in this to not only get us to this altitude but to also circularize our orbit which I feel like we're gonna be okay I definitely feel like we're gonna be okay right down here we have reached in between 450 and 460 we got a little under half tank left so I think we're really good there um, anything we can do we can't test anything we're gonna have to test that so let's go ahead and pin this down here all right and let's go ahead and go forward what we're going to do is get up to about 455. If you have the fuel, you don't have to be super exact. Uh, we will get into some ships later on that we got to be really on top of how much fuel we're using. So uh, it, it's a good habit to always make sure you remember hey, you know, we're, we're just, we're going to be running on fumes to accomplish this and making sure you really try hard to, to hit all the most efficient ways to get up, which we'll go over once we need it. All right, we're coming up onto where I'm going to burn.
Oh, look at that. Got a great picture. All right, let's go ahead and do our burn. Mm, no. Okay, we're in orbit. So now let's see the check marks. We're good. We're inside of our range right here. So we'll go ahead and run test and we have completed that one as well. So lastly, all we need to do, spin this guy around. So we are pointing retrograde. So our, now our engines are pointing towards the direction of travel, which means that when we burn, it's gonna bring our periapsis back down. In five, four, three, two, one. Uh, I like to always come in around 30. I think that's a pretty safe spot that you're in the atmosphere deep enough that pretty much anywhere you're coming from, you're going to get captured. Uh, but you're also not diving too deep to where it's really going to cause too much overheating on your ship. Let's go ahead and speed this up now and get back. Oh, and we're coming in on the dark side. I probably should have planned for that. But you know what? The ship is here, I promise you. It has not gone anywhere. It is right there. All right, I think we're gonna might hit sunrise anyways once we get around here. Uh, once we get about 80, I'm gonna slow us back down again. And we're gonna just point straight away from the planet and we're gonna release our stage. Let's go ahead and put that there so it just does it all at once. And there it goes. We are detached and ready to enter atmosphere. We are now in atmosphere. I'm gonna go ahead and time warp us because right now we are going, uh, we're extremely high still and it's not gonna cause any damage to our vehicle. All right, once you hit about 45, 40-ish, 40 that's when things start to get hot. Um, but every this is a well-made capsule. Everything's going to work out fine. As you can see, we I only put 40. And you'll see here that pretty soon this will stop and we will not hit zero. Even though we came from you know, however fast we're going. 2,800 uh, meters per second. See, stop, we've got nine left, almost 10. Okay, shoots deployed, and we're gonna land in the dark. Well, I don't have any mods on here, so I'm not gonna be able to make it brighter for you. Well, that's kind of a cool picture. Look at that. Let's get some snaps. I'm sorry, I nerd out with the, the graphics. Some of the times the pictures that this game, even though they're not the greatest graphics in the world, uh, some of the pictures that you get from it are just amazing. Like, I mean, how cool is that right there? Let's get one more just for fun. All right, all right, I'll stop nerding on pictures. I apologize. Let's get us down to the water. And we should get this contract once we hit this. Bam, look at that. So we should have knocked out all four I was a dumb dumb. We only knocked out three, but still, it's going to be a great payout for us. Let's go ahead and recover. We got 71 science now, so we can unlock some more goodies. Let's go take a look at that. Definitely want this one. And we will, my order will go here to here to here. 
So that's how we're going to unlock the rest of this tech tree. And let's just take a look here. So what did we do? We tested these, made 66 plus an advancement of 24. We, where's the next one? Explored Kerbin, made 31, 32,000 off of that one. And what was the last? We did one other one, where's that wheel? Why am I not seeing it? It's there it is. Uh -huh. Made another 29, almost uh, 30,000 on that one. So we did really good on that mission. Uh -huh. So last but not least, we have a Explore the Moon. I'm going to save that one for uh, next time. See any other ones we can do real quick? That wouldn't be a bad one. And we could probably test. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and knock this one out right here. Oh, yeah. We're going to take the moon one because we're up to max of seven because we upgraded. We're going to take the test rover max model S2 splashed in Kerbin. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and run one more flight with you guys. And we will be done for the day. All right, so we got to test rover wheels. We want to test the extra large parachute. Come on, get on there. There we go. And we want to hopefully test this decoupler. I will use a swivel for this. The max height we're going is 19 to 22, so we should be good with the amount of, in let's just throw one more tank on there, just in case. Go ahead and save it. Make sure our staging is proper. Everything looks good there. You know what? Here's another way of saving some coins. We should have plenty of fuel. I'm gonna go and take this off and we're gonna land this whole thing back into the water. Save and it's Jeb's turn. Launch. All right, back on the launch pad. Let's go ahead and turn SAS on check everything everything looks good full throttle let's open this up so i hopefully remember this time in five four three two one launch switch over so we're looking at our lapses i'm gonna lean us over just a little bit and slow our throttle down here Again, we don't want to be trying to push too crazy hard through uh, this thick atmosphere. I keep leaning us over a bit because I want to make sure we also splash down into the water. Fuel's looking good. Engine pressure is nominal. I think we're gonna make this work. We're coming up to an apoapse of 19. I'm gonna push it to 22. 23, and then we're gonna go ahead and let it do its own thing. Because we only have to be traveling at at least 20 meters per second, so that's that's gonna be fine. And done. Contract completed. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is try not to burn up in the atmosphere, or uh, burn up our parachute coming down. So we're going to use this engine to help uh, keep us from going too fast back down to Kerbin. So what we want to do 
is slowly work against prograde and meet up with retrograde. You'll see it coming up here. And we want to try to keep the center of our little um, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know what the proper term is for that. If someone in the community could tell me, I'd appreciate it. I don't remember. Uh, but we want to keep it right on the retrograde and that's going to help keep us stable on our way, uh, return back here. When we get a little closer, I'm going to probably start burning to try to slow us down because we want to be able to test the chute. There it goes, and we got the next one. Perfect. Go ahead and turn SA, uh, SAS off now and let the chute do all the work. I don't have to really do anything anymore. Uh, one thing we are going to have to do is monitor our speed though. We do not want to start burning up too fast to where the chute is going to destroy itself because that's not going to be fun. Just sipping some fuel, making sure that uh, our speed decreases and not increases. I'm watching my fuel consumption right now to make sure we have enough for landing, which it looks like we're going to be fine. This is like a poor man's version of a SpaceX return. Chute is open. We're traveling at nine meters per second, almost ten. So what we're going to do is, once we get a little closer, I'm going to start burning again, and I'm going to try to drop that down to under five because we will be okay. What was that? Something just tried to hit us. All right, we're getting closer. Let's go ahead and start burning. It's going to be good right there. There we go. SAS on. Oh, that's too good. That's fine. And we need to test our wheel. Bam. There's three missions in one. One thing else uh, we can do is check for science. I think we already got science here, didn't we? We did. All right. Well, let's recover. All right. So we received 3,800 uh, kerbucks back. We've shot up to 435,000 funds, up to 178 reputation. And that's going to do it for us, guys. Again. This is Max Thrust. I appreciate you guys watching my uh, videos. Please let me know what you think. Give me some feedback and let me know what I can do better. Uh, stuff you guys want to see, mods you want to see, or maybe even a different playthrough for someone that's more advanced that wants to just see a real Let's Play. Um, leave those comments below. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe and the little dingling bell thing so you never miss a upload from me. Again, I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. This is Max Thrust Gaming. I'm out.